Once upon a time, there was a dear little boy who loved his little toys, but most of all he loved his games, and there was nothing he would not have given for them. And so here we are at the end of season 2 with Benji's lightning quick top 100 games of all time. 100 horrified Universal Monsters in a beautifully produced pick up and deliver game. The beauty of this hideous creation is not its throwback mechanics so much as its replayability and variable AI opponents that behave thematically and give you a set of cool objectives and win conditions. 99. Camel Up. A racing game with camels that hop on each other's backs. Not to be taken too seriously then, the somewhat unpredictable nature of the outcome of each round makes for a suspenseful and engaging game that gives you a welcome number of options for a pseudo party game. 98. Age of War a game about chucking lots and lots of dice, covering up rows of symbols that represent military combatants in feudal Japan, looking to be the most dominant clan. Sometimes you need a filler game that tips into something simple and enjoyable. 97. The Seventh Continent Arguably the ultimate evolution of Choose Your Own Adventure. Swapping page numbers for a big box of indexed cards. It's rare to capture a sense of wonder in storytelling the way Seventh Continent does, and the mechanics of hand management and push your luck don't disappoint. 96. Star Wars Imperial Assault. This is probably the best you could have hoped for if you wanted a dungeon crawler set in the Star Wars universe. The problem is, I didn't need a sci-fi based dungeon crawler in my life, so it's a testament to how well this one is designed and produced that it's on my list. 95. Jawlasaur Island This is what happens when you get over your phobia of a divisive aesthetic and give a great game time to win you over. This two-player distillation of Dinosaur Island brings dice drafting and set collection alongside tight and well-sequenced gameplay. 94. Marvel Dice Masters I've rarely been so buzzed by a game upon its release, and other than a jarring disconnect between the dice representing your heroes and the action cards that empower them, this hit all the right notes. Unfortunately, however, something better was on the horizon. 93. Eldritch Horror One of the few games that sets the Cthulhu mythos on the world stage. A variety of old gods are the antagonist and you ask the solution in this cooperative point-to-point -point movement and skill checking game that will require full cooperation and skill to succeed. 92. The Reckoners Holy overproduced dice rolling game Mr Sanderson. This dice rolling and resource management game sees you moving from city to city, trying with great difficulty to curb the influence and ultimately take down supervillains that have taken control of everything. 91. Parks How do you rein in your enthusiasm for such a beautiful game? That's the question. Good thing then the gameplay itself holds up. The keep moving forward track is spot on for opportunity and denial, and all the bells and whistles complement the beauty and the brains. 90. Battle Law 2nd Edition Games with hexes are my kryptonite, they bring me to my knees. And thank the hybrid miniatures war games god then that battle law gives you the best of both worlds with modular board setup, solid movement and combat mechanics that bring a smile to me face. 89 Ethnos Some games don't blow your socks off but you're really glad you have them. Ethnos teaches you the rudiments of area control, hand management and set collection all in one tidy set of rules. Oh, and you got a bunch of factions to mix things up with as well. 88. 
cartographers. A flip and write in the role player universe certainly piqued my interest, and the net result did not disappoint. There's nothing particularly unconventional about the flipping or the writing of polyomino shapes, but the forward planning required to win is tippy top. 87. Bang the dice game. Sometimes you just need a dice rolling party game that accommodates a bunch of people and that sees most of the players around the table adopting a hidden role. And bang is that game. No matter what side you're on though, it'll be fun or challenging or both. 86. Dice City. Imagine a city of dice. Ah. How about a dice placement game that sees you gaining resources or military strength based on what dice you roll? There's more than enough going on here that's good to forgive the game its kind of repetitive nature. 85. King of Tokyo. Massive kaijus fighting over Tokyo City. Me want to try that. The constant flux of who's on what side of the fence when it comes to taking damage and the really swish push your luck dice rolling that sees you either racing to 20 points or remaining the last one standing is just too much fun. 84. Descent. Journeys in the dark. And this is what happens when you prefer fantasy over sci-fi as your dungeon crawl setting. Descent reinvigorated my love for of what's behind that door that had long been dormant since HeroQuest ended up in the loft. To me, the modern godfather of the genre. 83. Legacy of Dragonhold. A more direct lineal successor to the old choose your own adventure books sees this premise expanded over a multi-part story arc that has you exploring the village of Dragonholt in your downtime between adventures. This RPG light experience brings the story and the immersion. 82. Lord of the Rings The Trading Card Game one good thing to come out of this self-isolation were trips down memory lane. An ahead of its time deck construction game that sees players commanding both good and evil, and the more you spend on your fellowship, the more your opponent gets to spend stopping you. 81. Keyforge. How liberating to have a card game in the cupboard that takes the construction out of deck construction. Yes, it's gimmicky, but the board control based combat and swingy nature of some of the cards makes for a game that you always have a chance of winning. 80. Hero Realms A fairly generic deck building game that's main selling point is its portability, but the game comes to life in the cooperative Players vs Enemies campaign boxes that were subsequently released. You will do well to find this much content in such a small box elsewhere. 79. Lords of Waterdeep. The granddaddy of fantasy worker placement games. Yes, the choices you can make each turn are as vanilla as vanilla gets, but the quests you embark on make for some meaningful gameplay choices and there's still just enough going for it to slow its aging process. 78. Heroes of Land, Air and Sea Ah, 4X Games. The time sinks to be all time sinks. This bad boy, however, does its best to keep things brief, and the tech trees on tap with each of the asymmetric races are a real delight. Despite some mechanical issues I have with the game, I still love getting it to the table. 77. One Deck Dungeon this, as far as I'm concerned, is the little small box game that could. Here you're rolling dice representing your character's skills and expertise, covering symbols on cards representing minions and traps that you'll encounter is the order of the day, and I can't say enough good things about it. 76. Fantasy Realms 
This is what happens if you take a rummy-esque game and try and mix and match all the cards in your hand to combo off with each other to give you the most points. X goes with Y, but not with Z, means you'll be drafting cards to ensure everyone in your hand has its place. And so that concludes the first 25 chapters of this year's book. What could possibly be contained in the next quarter of this here story? Stay tuned to find out, but do not fear, you will not have to wait long.